I went to America after my schooling to study electronic engineering. Okay, so I ended up in California, and that is where you know where the whole hippie movement started. The whole you know all the things, the spin-offs today that we have. LGBT, environment, free sex, drugs. It's all a result of that era. So I was studying engineering at UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles. And my roommate was a film student called Marshall Williams. He was a contemporary of Francis Ford Coppola at UCLA. And then, uh, and then at that time, the what they call the art house cinema was just beginning to enter America, you know, in, in a bigger way. Because America was also doing all that formula stuff, you know, Beach Boys, this thing, that thing, you know, the same thing. And then slowly these films from the world cinema started entering the, uh, the American scene, which was again a result, I think, of the hippie movement because then the curiosity became so huge about other cultures. And then, uh, at, uh, then near UCLA, there's a very famous boulevard, you know, called Santa Monica Boulevard. It goes right over the ocean. And Santa Monica nowadays is like prime property in America. Okay, those days was slum, semi-slum area. Okay, so then these kind of uh, people who were these cinema lovers, they would uh, rent a store, you know, that had gone out of business, and just put chairs on the store. And sure, starts doing 16 millimeter prints of the of the world cinema, you know. So then, when I when I when I saw that world, I was just totally transfixed. I was just totally, you know, it was just totally amazing for me to see that kind of thing. And I've always had a love for literature, you know, reading. So then I saw these great classics come on the screen. So then I, you know, so then uh, so then you know, then you would see. All your, you know, the, you know, Kurosawas and your Fellinis, and then of course I would see somebody from my own country, Satyajit Ray, and I would feel very, very proud, you know, because see, at that time, you people are too young to remember there was a lot of racism, you know, you know, in in the West, not so much in California, but still, you know, we had this kind of very deep inferiority complex, you know, and uh, you know, we we had very very few people. Who are famous on the world? See, not like now. You know, you have famous filmmakers, famous writers in English. You have executives of top countries like you know companies like Microsoft and you know Google, who are headed by Indians. So at that time, the Indian could only aspire that much. It was, it was, you know, that you could only aspire to reach that level, not beyond that. You know. And uh, so that's how I got fascinated in cinema. So I would go after my, I go every evening practically. You know, they, they, you know, and of course, they, you know, they're very cheap. You know, so it was literally just that. Just you know, a, a store went out of business, so they just put a few chairs. You know, and then they had 60 millimeter projector, and then you would see the film on the screen. So that is how I got fascinated with cinema. You know, I come from business. I come from Banya family, Marwadi family, right? So obviously, my father had passed away when I was still in school. So obviously, my mother's expectation was that I was going to be the next Birla, right? You know, foreign return and year vote, etc. Right? My son is going to be the next Birla of this country. So there's this huge expectation, you know, to set up industry and you know, and uh, you know, kind of you know, do what the you know family line is, which is you know, business, you know. And then I. Then I, then when I would sort of, you know, I did electronic engineering, right? And before I left America, I was working for a company where I was making well, very part of a huge project of, of, of Earth space communication systems. You know, because you know, this split up into various modules, you know, so it's not that you work on the whole system. So that was my work, was state of the art, you know, right? Right at the edge of technology, you know. So when I used to tell people that I do electronic engineering, they would say, oh, wait a minute. They'd go in the bedroom and bring me the radio saying, can you fix it? I said, oh my God, you know, my God, wherever, wherever I reached, you know. And anyway, then I tried to set up an industry 
and uh, you know at that time was the big thing was the radio electronics you know? then the tape recorder licenses came and then i kind of found out that you know that this, this you know there's a lot of bribery and all go on to do all this you know and then i uh, then just and i was not really very happy you know i didn't want to do this you know and, you know because it was it was sort of you know far creatively it was far below what i was used to doing as i'm not going to make tape recorders for god's sake all my life you know and um, so then one day somebody i knew vaguely uh came from bombay his name was vijay rai from delhi then and he so in that time I was you know in the papers i started reading about this new wave cinema beginning uh, in india with you know with with apna uh, minal das uh, film bhuvan shom and the money call and you know. then among those name was basu chatterji so i just i just read a review of his i think it was film pia ka ghar you know so then this guy came to me and he said ki you you know want to distribute these films and i and i and i and i just said by the way i said i don't want to distribute but you know if you know this do you know this guy basu chatterjee he says are wo to hamare bade dost hain i said look i might produce a film if he agrees to do one with me so so i said you talk to his i said go to him talk to him then from there we'll take it on so then he telephoned me from bombay saying what oh, he is saying that yes he would do a film with you so i flew around to bombay <coughs> and um, so very funny incident you see because i had no bank account right so in america the only thing i knew was okay if you know bank account take travelers checks with you no huh? so i got travelers checks worth 1 lakh from my bank here <laughs> took them with me you know to bombay and get to pay somebody huh? and um, so then i talked to bas basuda and uh, he said yes he will do a film so then i said well uh, he says if you have any story in mind i said no i don't but i said you know but i said you must be having stories that you want to make so he gave me about four what four synopsis to read treat, what what we call treatments you know the treatments about 5 to 10 pages you know and i just said this is the one i want to make rajneganda so and he was very kind he said miss jindal let me tell you one thing ki two, two producers have come 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 you know uh, come, said they'll make this story give me a standing amount they never came back so he says uh, he says you sure you want to do this uh, and uh, it was based on a sh- long short story by manu bandari you know uh, she was the wife of uh, uh, rajender yadav who wrote sara akash you know they both sorry so i read that story also i said this is the one i want to do he said okay so then i remember that i gave all these signing amounts the travelers checks and so all the filmmakers there was this buzz saying this saying this crazy producer with leather boots and jeans and long hair and a sling bag you know <laughs> coming around giving travelers checks to the <laughs> to the film industry they never heard about it you know then you know so I, 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 the, what to do with this i said all you do is put put in the bank like 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 an ordinary check i, I said cash it is just put in the bank huh? so they didn't even know that you know and most of them didn't know that well the casting was you see originally we wanted shashi kapoor and uh, shashi kapoor and, and and i think i, I think shashi kapoor and tanuja for the main roles two main roles and i think amita for the second role you know and then of course you know the thing is that it was a low budget film so shashi was of course shashi was a great friend of mine he still is you know but i haven't seen him for a long time so he was so he was the, he was one of the top stars at that time you know so then uh, he says ha ha hum kar denge you know he was you know, very very sophisticated you know ha ha is a He used to come and meet me in my office. His office was behind the Taj. You know, he used to he used to share an office with with, uh, with Ivory Merchant Films at that time. You know, so then he said, "Ki then he said, uh, Suresh, yar, ऐसे है कि मेरी मेरी फिल्म का एक बाटा रेट होता है." तो ऐसा मुझे ऐसा 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 आई कहाँ half understood कि बाटा रेट क्या होता है? तो ऐसे ठीक है ऐसे ओके है ना? Then I went and told Basu. I said, "Basu, I started laughing." 
He says, you know what he's saying? He's, he's saying no to us. I said, what do you mean? He said, Bata Red means there's, there's a certain price below which you can't sell my film. Hmm. So obviously, I can't sell a Rajinigan that at, I think his, his price was 7 lakhs of territory. Of course, we knew we can't sell Rajinigan that 7 lakhs of territory, you know. So then, uh, then with Shashi, uh, so then we, then we wanted to sell Malika Sarabhai uh, also for the main role. We went to Ahmedabad to meet her. Malika was finishing her master's degree. And she said, uh, she said, Dada Suresh, this is what it is. I would love to do the film. But, um, but my father, it was my father's wish that I do my MBA. So can you shoot on the weekends only? I said, look, I said, look, Malika, it's not possible because we are such, we are such a low budget film. We can't come every weekend to Ahmedabad and shoot. <coughs> we don't have that kind of money. Then, then finally she worked in Katha, you know. So the first thing she, she said when, I, when she came, she was, in the, she was getting her makeup done and, I, and I, when I went to see her, she said, yes, Suresh, finally we are doing it together. I said, yeah, Malika, finally, after so many years, we are doing it together, doing a film together, you know. So all these adventures. Then, of course, we decided that we'll take, uh, you know, uh, non-actors, newcomers. And Amol Palikar in the movie is a, is a, if you remember the movie, he's a bank clerk. And he actually was working as a bank clerk in Bombay at that time. So then, uh, so that is how it, the, only Dinesh Thakur had done this film called uh, Basu Bharacharya's film. Mm, I for, forget the name now. Anubhav. Uh, Anubhav, exactly. Huh? But the other two were not, you know, the, I mean, uh, you know, Amol was of course known in the Marathi stage, but we had done nothing, you know. So we, so we all newcomers actually. Yeah. So Vidya Sinha was uh, sort of uh, found after some scouting. Some yeah, after you know, just you know, just you know, yeah, the grave, grave point, no? the people just because see, 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 because my I told Basuda, I said, look, Basta, my theory is hmm, that the audience can stand a bad looking guy but they can't stand a bad looking girl i said even women don't stand a bad looking girl so i said so we have to find a girl who's good looking you know so then we're looking for then then i think uh, uh, i i think then uh, one of our one of our people in, in, you know that we had signed up one of them suggested with the asana or I, th I think she had come to see Basu Chatterjee before, say if you have a role, yeah, you know. Like I was in Calcutta at that time, um, and uh, so my nephew calls me up, and he says, Chacha ji, uh, uh, you know, Rajinigandha has got the Filmfare Award. I said, ho nahi sakta? Because Filmfare Award, there used to be this very notorious rumor about them which was partly true, that, that you buy the copies of film phase and nominate yourself, you know, because it was based on the nomination of, of, of the viewer. So it was a very notorious thing, and except, except in the film industry. Okay, that's what film fair rewards are given that way. You just buy a whole bunch of film fairs and ask your own kind of family, friends, employees to send the nomination. So I, so I said, I Sunil, we have to one copy of the film fair. How did we get the award? And then sure enough, I said, so you immediately go and get the Bombay papers, Delhi papers. So then he got them and showed on the front page. It was there that uh, he got the Filmfare Award. I think I was in Calcutta. Uh, after that, I think Shatranj has already, we already had agreed to do Shatranj. Then finally, Rashtri people were my distributor. Then they called me up at the Grand Hotel saying, the Ms. Janari have got the Filmfare Award, yeah. President Gandhi became this unexpected hit. Mm -hmm. You know, so which is not expected at all. I was, I was, I was because the film after, in a, after the rough cut, you know, rough cut is before you do the finals, uh, was never sold for more than more for nearly one and a half year. But well, then suddenly this film becomes this huge hit. You know, you know it is running, playing in three theaters in Bombay, and all three do Silver Jubilee, 25 weeks, you know, in three theaters in Bombay, and so you know, so I had, uh, so I had, uh, you know. 
because because I told my mother, my mother of course was you know like you know she she was totally crestfallen that here is a son because at that time you see now I want to tell you young people that now you know all the upper class families want to sell their daughters to cinema. That time it was considered to be a dandi ka danda, <coughs> you know that only people from only pe- pe- from good families so called you know boys want to sell cinema industry just to have a have sex and and good times yeah? and so, so I must tell you that you know so then my mother then she, but she was very wise then she says so I told her I said look I said look okay here's the deal let me do one film all right if it doesn't work then I will come back here you pick up the girl I, for me that I should marry you tell me which factory I should put up and I will give total devotion to this. And she said, okay, that's the deal. And then, of course, the film made it. So then, you know, here I am. And yes, Tinu Anand was one of my first contacts in the film industry. There's a very good friend of mine, Sajid Peer Boy, who was in uh, school with uh, Tinu at uh, Mayo. You know, Sajid subsequently married my niece also, you know. and. Uh, uh, so then, uh, that time Sajid was based in Delhi, you know, his, his father, they had a marketing advertising associates, one of, the, one of the advertising companies in Bombay, well known, you know, there were not too many of them. There were of course the big, two, three, five big boys. And were, so, then, uh, so then when I was going to, so he said, you must meet my friend Tino Anand, you know. So he gave me the introduction to Tino Anand, you know. So, uh, so he was my first contact, so his family was like my foster family in Bombay. So I used to spend all my weekends there with them. I used to go on the weekend, I used to stay in town, then I on a paying guest accommodation, then I'd go on the weekend and, sp- and sleep the night over and you know. So then after that what happened is that this film became a big hit. And uh, then I was just again had gone on the weekend to, uh, to uh, you know, to, to Beach House where, where, where he stayed, you know. Beach House is very Pratma Bedi and, 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 and uh, Kabir Bedi and Shekhar Kapoor and all they live in this beach house was this famous building in, it's still in the famous building in Jew. So they were on the sixth floor. So there was Komeri. So just, I just said that, uh, you know, I just said intuitively that, uh, uh, that uh, I think that Mr. Ray, uh, it was well known that Mr. Ray had refused everybody. Raj Kapoor told him, Mr. Ray, whatever you come, I will not even look at you. You have the, uh, not even come in, the, in, your, in, in your eyesight. Please come and do a film the way you want to do it with, in my studio. And if you want, I will not even come within your hearing. If you think I'm going to interfere. In the SS Vasan, there was this very famous Gemini Studios. Then Tarachan Brajatia, you know. Uh, so everybody he refused, you know. He said, I'll never do a film in Hindi. So then somehow it was just this intuition that I had. Well, intuition is also, you know, intuition also has a, has a basis, you see, because there's some seed that gets planted, you know, on some stray conversation or something that, and then after a while it kind of, it kind of gets activated by some other event that happens. So Mr. Ray that year had been the chief speaker at the convocation of the FTII. And there was, and then he made this comment. This was against Manikal and Kumar Shani, you see, because, because they had this kind of, you know, this Ritik Ghatak thing. You know, we make it for ourselves. We are artists, you know, you know, you know, art for art's sake. You know, they, they're both extremely good friends of mine. Mani, of course, has passed away. He stayed here several times, and uh, so, um, so then there he made this comment, something like that, when when the audiences don't accept their, uh, their people, people's film, then it's like saying that the cook doesn't know how to cook or something like that, you know. So, I, so, so that probably put the seed into my head, you know. When he's talking, because you know, Ray never talked about audiences, but this was in response to, you know, the, this, uh, the, uh, our friend Mani Kaul and uh, Kumar Shani, who were the uh, blue-eyed boys of uh, Ritik Ghatak, you know. Of course, this rivalry went back a long time. It was unfortunate, but you know, but I think that uh, you know always felt that Ray stopped him, which is not true. You know, Ray was such a gentle. You know, he just 
you know, he just helped everybody. I mean, he helped everybody without condition. In one of my instances, I gave, gave him my book, you know, on, 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 on Sean Benegal's Nishant, you see. And uh, it, was not, it was not going to the festival. M emergency thing, na? So, he had to say that he was in a bad light. So, so Sham even offered to put a placard in the beginning of the film saying these conditions don't exist today in India. Even then they refused. Then, uh, then Neera called me up because Neera's sister is married to my best friend from school, Anjali. And she said, Suresh, please can Mr. Ray give a letter to Mrs. Gandhi? Because Mrs. Gandhi had a lot of respect for Mr. Ray. You know, any, any 24 7 he could call her Mrs. Gandhi. That was one thing about good about the old biddy, you know, she had really raw respect for artists, you know. So any well-known artist could always call her up. You know, Usha Bhagat was her <coughs> social secretary. And uh, you could call up Usha Ji anytime. Any artist. And Mrs. Gandhi would immediately attend to the matter at hand. That, that you must give it to her. <coughs> so then Mr. Ray wrote a letter to Mrs. Gandhi. Then the film was allowed. So you know, so 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 so, so that I think was unfortunate that this thing had to happen because you know both are such such great filmmakers. <coughs> but Ray had nothing to do with it. You know, you know, I've known I've known many geniuses like Rita Attenborough, Jean Claude Carrier. And one thing you see about them, they're always very helpful. You know, because they're so secure in their own creativity. Because Tino Nan's father was a very well-known dialogue writer. So, so when Tino said, Achha, I want to, you know, that's what I want to do, because the father tried to get him to do some catering, this, some other business, don't get into the film industry, kush aur kaam karo. But then, uh, you know, then, then Tino finally said, no, I want to do cinema. So then his father told him, look, I can ask two people to take you as assistant. One is Fellini, whom I wrote, one is Ray. So you tell me what you prefer. He said, he said, I would like that you stay in India, but it's up to you. So then Ray said, okay. Then Tim said, okay, I would like to work with Mr. Ray. So five years he was assistant, yeah. But Saeed became a very, very close friend. You know, because, see, Saeed was, I come from a, uh, I, I come from a, uh, from a place called Mirir Kotla in Punjab, okay. It was the second smallest princely state, okay? A Muslim state. Even today, 70% of the population there is Muslim. So, Say Jafri's father was working as the Diwan to the Nawab. So, he was born in Lirikotla also. So, we shared that kind of a little, little commonality between us. And then he came to be a very dear friend. Uh, you know, a phenomenal actor. Wow, you know. Yeah, really phenomenal actor. You know, Sanjeev Kumar, because Sanjeev Kumar, you know, wanted to dub the dialogue. I, I said, look, I don't, I said, Sanjeev, I don't mind the expense, but let, but Mr. Henry has to decide it. So Maida said no. Huh? So, so he says, Suresh Yaar, I'll tell you one thing, there is Shole, you know, when they heard my dialogue, they thought that, you know, I'd done a very mediocre job, he said, but when I dubbed the dialogue, you know, then the whole thing came out. I said, look, Sanjeev, if, 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 if Manik, the thing is okay, then it's okay. So, so you got a little bit of this complex. <coughs> because, of course, you know, you, you know, you know, Sayyid's mother tongue was Urdu. He could play around with it, twist around with it as he wanted. <coughs> so, Sanjeev had a little bit of dis disadvantage uh, against Sayyid. They, both, they, were called, they were, of course, phenom all three of them phenomenal actors, you see. <coughs> and Attenborough, they were all, <coughs> they were all you know, all top of the line actors. Not one of them was, you know. And uh, so the rest of the cast, I mean, it, it, even uh, the film had actors who became really great or they were just starting out even in like pretty... Well, Victor Banerjee's first job, Farooq Sheikh's second job. There's a story there also, Farooq Sheikh's story. I think I put it in my book, you know. <laughs> Do you want to give it to you here also, or is this going to be repetition? Oh, no, that's, that's fine. Okay, anyway, so you know, so then, so then uh, I, so this, the, this, this, is, this, this is the phenomenal person that uh, uh, Mr. Ray was. You know, he used to be, he used to be completely 
on Karam. He used to completely be in touch with the whole world of cinema in Bombay and abroad. You know, he used to read all these film magazines, all the, you know, excited and sound, you know, regularly, you know. So I told him, Jalal Aga was a very good friend of mine. So for this role, I said, I said, uh, I said, uh, I said, uh, I, I said, Manikda Habar Jalal Aga. He says, no, he says, he says, I want his father for that role, you know, of that, of that crazy, when they go and find this chess set and that kind of mentally, dis, mentally deficient son who meets them. Agasa plays that role. He says, I want him, his father for that role. So then he says, did you, did you see Garam Hava Suresh? I said, yes. He says, see that, see that, see that young man who comes at the last of the, the end of the film. I said, no, he says, he, but of course, Shama Zaidi was working with us. So then, so he, says, he says, I want him for that role. You know, so this is the kind of thing he used to remember, you know. You know, he used to remember, you know, every performance he saw, you know, there was, there was, there was a filing cabinet in there. Same with Richard, but I saw this called in him also. He had, they had this filing cabinet of, you know, filing down every good performances because in case I need them someday, you know. So, you know, so like I said, this is, you know, it comes with through very hard work. It's not easy. These guys worked hard on it, you know. And uh, then, um, then Farooq was, then I got in touch with Farooq Sheikh. Then I, you know, then he, then Farooq Sheikh, uh, so uh, uh, Manikda was staying at Shalimar Hotel uh, on Kemp's Corner, in uh, a well-known hotel. And um, so then he, so then, uh, uh, you know, Farooq came to see him. Then I went down to the restaurant. I said, you know, let them have one-to-one -one chat, you know, I, why should I be in the middle? <coughs> so then about half an hour later, Went, went up in the room, you know, I, th I thought I must have finished the chat by now. Then, and then so, so Ray sitting there, you know, he used to have this thing about, like, chewing his, when he was in deep thought, you know, he said, ah, Suresh, you're here, I said. He said, Suresh has, a, uh, Farooq has a problem. I said, okay. And, um, and Farooq was one of the most, gentlemanly, gentle person, you know, always courteous, polite, right? Old world gentleman. So he, so he says, Suresh Sahib, aise baat hai ki, that some people have, you know, offered me a major role, you know, as a hero in a film. And they think that if I take this small role, my image will get spoiled. By the way, that film was Nuri, which was made afterwards, huh? After Shadhan Jekhilari. So I said, look, I said, Farooq, I think that you're right. You know, that's true that you get typecast into, you know, certain roles, depending on your beginning roles. I said, but let me give you an example. I said, you remember Rod Steiger, pawnbroker, as he got the Oscar for it. As all through his career, he came as a, as a bit, bit actor. And so I feel that if there is a if there is a good role with a master director like Mr. Ray here, you know, you know I don't think it's going to harm your career. I said, but again, I said, look, I but but as a Maitha, but I agree with him that this is the thinking of the industry that if you don't uh, that you know that if you get typecast as a bit actor, then you get typecast as a big actor, you know. So then uh, so then he took the role. Bansi was a, you know, see, Bansi was part of the gang together, na? Bombay gang. So Bansi da was, so I knew him very well in Bombay, because he moved to Bombay by then, na? After Chawlata, he moved out to Calcutta, you know? Mainly for economic reasons, because, you know, of course, you know, because, because, because in Calcutta, there was not enough work for him, you know, to sustain himself all the time. But then, so, so he was kind of part of, part of my regular gang of people, you know, friends, you know? So, um, we used to be all hard drinkers. You know, so I knew him from the Antigua, from the prohibition days. Of course, he was a phenomenally good director. I mean, you can see his work here. Yeah. And the Charulata, you see his sets, you know. So, yeah, so he was a, you know, of course, he was a bit kind of cantankerous, but then, then, but then, but then I knew him for long enough. So, but, but a great, a very great director. 
Yeah, you know, when Richard was at that time, because, you know, then he had various options. You've seen my book. Uh, there was this uh, um, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins and, and uh, Apna. Who was the 20,000 Days Under the, uh, Under the Sea, that famous actor? Anyway, so there were various options. Then, then, uh, then finally zeroed on, on Richard Attenborough. And he was doing his very major film called A Bridge Too Far, which had all the Hollywood actors and bit roles, you know, this war, World War II film, you know, A Bridge Too Far. So he was editing that film. So we were not sure whether, you know, because at, at the time of editing, you know, directors don't meet anybody, you know. It's, it's such a stress job, it's such a full-time job, such an engaged job, you know. So then we decided to meet us, you know. So, uh, so we, we, Saeed Jafri was in London at that time, this is before the film shooting, of course, started. He used to live in, he lives in London. So he did, then started living between London and Bombay after he came to the f film industry here. Yeah. Then he started living, you know, but, but his base was London. He was only living in London. So then uh, we had a meeting in this uh, Gay Lords in Mayfair. You know, there, there are two, three Gay Lords in London. This is Mayfair. And uh, I still have this conversation, which I don't mind repeating because it's so beautiful. So when we settled down, kind of the four of us, you know, Saeed Jafri, uh, you know, Richard and Malik and myself. So then finally, you know, we settled down, after, you know, so he says that, um, so, um, so, so Ray tells him that, Richard, I have a role for you. He said, but, the, but I warn you, the role is not very big, you know. And you may not want to do it, you know. So, and his answer was, Satyajit, for you, I will read the telephone directory. You know. I said, wow, you know, this is some conversation, you know. Richard again was such a great. So then he came to work for, on, you know, General Utram again. Of, so we had all this, we had really fine actors, you know. You know, Barry John and Tom Alter and, you know, Victor Banerjee. First film of Victor Banerjee, by the way, huh? That's the very first film. And um, we are all this great, you know, these, these are all Shabana, great actors, you know, all this, you know, Veena, the old time Veena, Frida, you know, so we are all these great actors, really great actors. You know, we had heard about his thing and how it was called Dickie's Folly, you know, Gandhi, you know, the Dickie's foolishness, you know. And there was this famous uh, story that the Columbia chief told him, Dickie, who wants to see a film about a little brown, brown man in India? Do something else, you know. There was this famous stories going around. Because when he came, you know, our press is very na naughty, you know. So they put all these stories about Attenborough, you know, Gandhi. So all these stories put on the press here. At that point, he had been trying for 18 years to make the film. There was one star, there was this very famous legendary producer called Joe E. Levine. You know, there was, there was, there was three, four legendary producers, no? Carlo Ponti, Joe E. Levine, you know, uh, you know, at that time. So Joe E. Levine gave him the money to do the film. Pre-production was started already. And then the six day war happened between Israel and the Arabs. And our government took the Arabs, see how, you know, see how fortunes change, took the Arabs' point of view. And Joey Levin said, why should I finance a film about the great man of a country who is against the Jews? Stop it. Cut it in the middle, you know. So that is the, so then, then last day when he was leaving, we were staying at the, at the Grand Hotel in, in, in Calcutta. And then, uh, so he says, uh, I think he was supposed to go late in, you know, those, those early morning flights, you know. Then he said, then he said, darling, come have a drink with me uh, in the evening if, if you're free. I said, of course, you know, I said. And uh, he says, you know, I eat early, so I will not, uh, you know, come and have a drink with me. And if you want to come, oh, you can order some food in my room. And so then he told me, he says, you know, you must have heard that I want to make Gandhi, you know. To where I'm thinking that, oh, Dickie's folly, you know, 
you know, this, this. And he says, one day I want to make it. And when I do, I want to do. If you're not working with Manik, at that time, I want you to work with me. I said, sure, I'd love to. I, I had, that time I said, Are, kahan banne wali hai, yaar? Toh, baat, ye toh filmi baatein chalti hi rahti hai. You know, ba, you know, raat gai, baat gai, ye toh, wo ho yaar. But, but he, he was such a, he was such a determined man, wow. You know, he was such a, he was such a man of such, you know, he was at one time, tat, get, uh, chairman of RADA, trustee of the Tate Gallery, founder of Channel 4, radio first and television. You know, he was like an enormous energy, you know. And he was one of the founders of the Liberal Party as well. Remarkable man, very remarkable man. Yeah. Was very, was very fortunate, yeah. yeah. So then, of course, Mrs. Gandhi came back into power. Then, uh, you know, after the emergency, then Mrs. Gandhi, he had first met with, with, with because first when he started, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was still alive. And he got the introduction of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru through Lord Mountbatten. Because they were on the same charity together. This was the, this was the charity of, uh, this, the uh, Society of Muscular Distoff, I can never pronounce this, it's such a complicated name. Anyway, so that's how they were in the, in the they were in office. So, so then Louis Mountbatten gave him the introduction to Pandaji. Then Pandaji, then that, that's when he first met Indira Gandhi. So then, when, then, then Indira Gandhi had told him that Richard, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, okay, let's do Gandhi. Then the emergency came. So when she came back into power, she said immediately, yes, go ahead with the project. Because at that time, you know, they, uh, there were these two other independent companies that also said, we'll, we'll, we'll finance you if you get one third from India. So that's how it happened. Yeah. They, were, they were all independent companies. No. Studios never financed Gandhi. Gandhi don't get made every day, you know. Well, you know, well, what happened is that a very good friend of mine who worked with Neon Gandhi, Sudesh Sial, known him for, you know, and he's still a very good friend. So then, uh, of course, you know, when you're active in the field, then you keep on meeting people, no? You know, somebody's cinema opening is there, somebody's preview is there, somebody's, you know, and you keep on running into each other. So I knew Sai Pranjpe, but I was not really very close to her. Then Sai Pranjpe, you know, this was to be done for some other producer. And the producer backed at the last minute. And she practically had a nervous breakdown. So then Sudesh came to me. Saying Sudesh, I says about her that, you know, that if she doesn't, uh, if she doesn't do this film, she will be in the hospital. You know, she's in a very bad shape. <coughs> I said, Chalo, okay, okay, I'll do it, you know. Yeah. Then I did several work. Then I was, what I was doing is that the, is that I just felt that the cinema scene is not so creative, you know. And I, I don't do mainstream cinema only because of, it's not my temperament. I have no, I have no, I have no judgment to make on it, you know. That was the 80s, so, I mean, yeah. sort of. So then I tried, sev I then did several jobs for two, three foreign co-productions as co-producer. You know, I did one documentary series. We did three films with an actor called Hardy Kruger. Hardy Kruger, you know one who got away, uh, Hatari. He was in Hatari. Hardy Kruger, German actor. Then he was in, then he got the Oscar as Best Supporting Actor, one who got away. So Hatari had this project called Globetrotter, which was making films, travel documentaries around the world. So I did three documentaries. We did three document. no, we did three, Kerala, no, we did two in India. Then I was co-producer for that. Then I did another series, uh, another, uh, two, three small, you know, I just did like, like the location work kind of thing, you know. Because I just felt that there was nothing creatively to be done in India, you know. And scene was getting pretty bad. Then of course television came, so everybody got interested in that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to do television, I was very sure of that, you know. Even though S.S. Gill, you know, 
who is secretary at that time in television came and I was the vice president of the producer association. So we used to always kind of come to Delhi to, you know, and then he used to be very arrogant. And me and Amit Khanna were the ones who always used to fight with these guys, you know, you know, you know, argue them and, uh, you know, take them off and, you know. Amit Khanna is the, uh, the researcher and the... He's ah, he's the he, was, he was the one who was head of the uh, Reliance Entertainment, no? Now, now, he's, now he's retired. Um, so then, so I knew Gil from that. Because, you know, once, because we're coming for the, you know, we used to come and negotiate the television rates for our films. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a very contemptuous attitude towards cinema. It's only changed now. You know, everybody had a contemptuous attitude towards cinema. They wanted to see it. They wanted to be with the actors. But in front of you, they'd be contemptuous of you. You see, this is the, 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 you know, there was a split thing about the Indians had about cinema, you know. They, they wanted to kind of, you know, uh, talk about our immoral values and then wanted to have Amitabh Bachchan at home for dinner, you know. So, and the Babus had the same, same problem, you know. So then we used to fight, we, we were young, we used to fight with them and tell them, what do you mean, this thing, that thing. So then, so then everybody was chasing, he was the big boss, boss man, you know, he's the one who got Mahabharata, Ramayana and all that, you know, very, very intelligent, you know. And, um, so then Shashi Kapoor was giving a huge party in the Taj for his Janoon, you know, in the ballroom downstairs. And so, so I was, I, so I entered the room and I saw there's Mr. Gill, you know, you know, you know, the, the, you know, there's the honeycomb and all the bees are surrounding him, you know, trying to get his attention, you know, and I kind of, you know, that time, of course, I was kind of big party goers. So I just about knew everybody in town, you know. And of course, my films were famous. You know, knew everybody in the film industry, journalism, you know. So I just kind of, you know, walked around. Then I was just going across to see, uh, you know, just trying to bypass him and go across to the to see somebody and go to the other part of the room. And I, and, and and he's standing like this, and I I bypassed him. He caught my hand from the back. And looked at me and says, why aren't you doing something for us? I said, Mr. Gill, I am, I've decided I'm not going to do television. He says, you, he was a very arrogant man. He says, you come tomorrow with three, four proposals to my office and get my approval and do it. So, uh, so I said, I said, sir, okay, I'll think about it. I said, yeah. So, you know, so, but, but I somehow never got into television because, you know, that was kind of a, you know, it's, it's not my interest, you know, I mean. First of all, I was always, I never had this contempt for the film industry, okay. I never thought they were, un, they were below me. I could understand that why for them it's a business. 99% of the film industry, for them, they're businessmen. They are not, you know, you know they, they, they are not artists, they are businessmen, you know. And without the business, it's like Mr. Ray, again. He was this great, great artist, one of the greatest artists of all times in cinema. And he, so I asked him this question once, you know. I said, uh, he said, he says, he says, Suresh, I always, I know my films have a limited audience. But I think that audience can give us money money back if I keep the budget low. Because the greatest artist of all time, he, he never thought that the, I'm an art for art sex person. He says, no, my, my film has to give the money back to my producer. Because how will I go to him for my next, for, for, for my next film? So, so that we knew that there was always this thing. Of course, then, then of course you're trying to also push your, push your way through, you know. And uh, that's what I used to tell the, tell the distributors. I used to say that, look, this is the thing that, you know, that I think our films are so small, the budget is so small, you can easily, you know, you know, you, you know if it runs, you know, you, you can get your money back. So then, then they used to kind of, you know, agree with me and, you know. So, uh, so, so, so it's not the industry's, 
You see, there is always somewhere, there is always somebody somewhere who is sympathetically thinking with you. You have to just, you have to just, so you just find the person, you know. So it was nice to think that, it, you know, Shatranj Ke Khiladi, of course, because Rajinya there was a big hit, so you know, so it was, of course it was the biggest talked about project, so this trip just came on, came, came on the thing. The other day somebody asked me, <coughs> was this, was this sabotage? I don't think it was sabotage. It was just that these are businessmen. They just generally felt that the film will not make its money back. That was it. And I, under the contract, was oblig obliged to show them before the release. I could, I, 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 I could have, I could have. I could have made an excuse because the post was already up, you know. But then I felt that this was my contract, that I should fulfill the contract. So that is what they, they only felt, that the film will not make its money back. I don't know whether you guys know this, but here, but here is here's the reality of cinema, okay. Only one third of films produced worldwide get their money back or more. So the attrition rate is very high here. 60, 70 percent. So you have to, like, you know, like, like Vara, huh? with, my, with, my, with my Lama, you know, we made this one. Two million dollar film. Hmm. First of all, I think that we should be done in, in less money, but, you know, two million dollar film. We haven't sold a single territory. But, in my, my investment is, but, you know, but then, but then I know the score, you know. I said, no, you know, you must be feeling bad. I said, I said what bad? I said, I said look. Uh, I, give, I give this incident in, 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 uh, in, in, in my book also, about Shatranjit Khilari that, you know, um, Mr. Ray, the first thing he said, it's, it's a very expensive film, you may want to put so much money in my first film. I said, man, I'll give an arm and a leg and my soul, I will sell it to do this film, you know. Because then at the end of the day when people, they, they, they asked me that, you know, that were you, were you kind of, you know, I, I, said, I said, no, I, I said, look, I knew the reality. It was just that I was lucky I could sell the film beforehand. We could at least get the money under production, even though later I had to pay them back. I said, but, that, but, you know, but, you know, but that's the reality of cinema, you know. You just check up the, check the statistics. It's a 60 to 50, at least 50, 60 percent attrition rate. Only, only one third to 40 percent make their money back or more. The rest do lose money. It depends on how much, you know. My friend Smile Merchant and James Ivory, all through their life, till the Bostonians, they were just living hand to mouth. You know, he used to travel on a, on a scooter, a smile merchant, three-wheeler. He used to have economy class, he used to in the cheapest hotels in town. Because, 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 but, so, that, so, so that's what one of these distributors told me, you know, in New York. He says, he says, Suresh, they don't make their money back. And he says, maybe a smile has a little bit of a habit of, you know, what, what I mean, I said. He said, but the thing is, they churn out a film after film after film. He said, that you cannot deny to them, that their passion to make cinema. He said, so that affects us. He said, okay, look, these guys are, these guys are you know, they're not, they're, they're not putting any, I, I once stayed with a smile merchant. Well, there are three tiny flats in one building. No, sorry, James and Smile had a flat together and Ruth had a flat below them. Huh? And then I stayed with a smile, I think two nights when I was in New York, when I went for this promotion. Simply furnished, nothing. Only then finally after 25, after Bostonians, they built a little house on the Hudson River. Only after they made the Bostonians, then room with the view, then this thing, that. They just were hand to mouth. The only thing they ever earned, James is fond of, Miniature art. Thode paise. That time you buy miniature art for 200 rupees, 400 rupees, 1000 rupees. The only thing, when they saved some money, James would buy a miniature painting. That was it. Nothing. I stayed in his house, nothing. In the kitchen was Kali. But he was a genius of a cook. So he said, he said, breakfast khaage. And I had gone to the kitchen. And I saw, I saw, 
ऐसे यहाँ तो कुछ भी नहीं है बट यू सच जीने सर नो वेरी वेरी रिसल्ट ऑफ थिंग्स मेक द मोस्ट ब्रिटिश ब्रेकफास्ट एंड आई सॉ दिस नथिंग इन द शेल्फ ना फ्रिज में कुछ पड़ा हुआ है तो मैं कहीं मुझे ब्रेकफास्ट में मेरे को शायद ही नीचे जाके शॉपिंग करके आएगा यू नो बट दैट वॉज द थिंग दैट दैट इज पैशन फिल्म मेकर डोंट गो इन टू इट अनलेस यू रियली फील दैट यू विल डाई इफ यू डोंट मेक द फिल्म डोंट गो इन टू इट इट्स नॉट वर्थ इट You have to just feel that you will die if you don't make a film, you know. Like Malik Dar said to the doctor, he said, "Look, if I don't make a film, I'll die sooner." You have to let me make a film of these artists. You have to let me make a film. That's what keeps me alive, you know. Like same with you know you, you know K. F. Bas. K. F. Bas was very close friends of Tino's father. You know, they had to meet every evening when they were in town. Every single evening, K. F. Bas would be there. Every single evening. He was living. He lived about two miles away, and so, so the, he said. He told me the same thing. He said, "Suresh, you know, Tino told me." He said, "I said, 'I said, 'I said, Uncle, why do you keep on making these films? वो पैसा तो बनाती नहीं है, हाँ?" He said, "Tino, मैं मैं मर जाऊँगा. मुझे पता है मैं मर जाऊँगा मैंने अगर फिल्म नहीं बनाई. That's what he used to do. He wrote a little article here." Got some money, bought one, bought, bought, bought one roll of film, started shooting, and of course nobody charged him anything because his films never made a single bloody penny. But but आपको वो तो but the roll of film you have to pay for, the processing you have to pay for, the equipment you have to pay for. No, no, nobody else took any single money from 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 K. A. Bas. अब क्या लोगे बास साहब से? उनके कुछ को खुद के पास पैसा है नहीं है जेब में, हाँ? What are you going to take from him? Because, but but you knew that here is a man who you know is going to put every single penny that you give him for a film in the film he's not even going to buy a, a pair of trousers for himself mr ray died in a rented flat for god's sake he was one of the greatest artists of all times in india he When he died, the flat was still rented. He never in, he never owned a flat in his own lifetime. And you could have any time. You could have gone to Hollywood any time. 